Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, I am uh, involved in all sorts of information on British spiders to the industry and elsewhere. Um, my background is I was an animal services manager with Stevens Borough Council, uh, involved in both pest control and animal control alike. Um, I've had a lifelong interest in spiders and other creepy crawlies, and uh, this is one of the new species to the UK that I have a particular interest in. Okay, so this is um, a presentation about this, this particular species or two species of spider in this genus, Steatoda. It is reflecting on the situation in the UK, uh, and I notice there's lots of people, international uh, uh, audience here today, uh, so it doesn't really apply there because your spiders in some of these countries, uh, you've got some really dangerous ones and uh, this really doesn't apply to you. So it is specifically to the UK. Okay. Um, so this is a false widow. Um, where are we going? Okay. And this is a false widow. This is a female false widow. And this is the subject of the majority of my talk this morning. Okay, um, they, the false widow is in a family of spiders called the theridid spiders or comb-footed spiders. Uh, some of them will be familiar to you and uh, have a, a, an in, a reputation, uh, infamous reputation at that. Um, here we have the top left is a redback spider in this genus Latrodectus. Uh, the black widow. Uh, again, the Latrodectus. There are about 30 odd species of Latrodectus in the UK, uh, sorry, in the world. And um, they're found on all continents except Antarctica. They are notoriously um, venomous in that um, the black widow and, in fact, the redback spider, their venom is equivalent to. Uh, that of a Western diamondback rattlesnake, although they don't produce enough of it to do any real harm. Having said that, if you get bitten by one of these spiders, the pain, I am told, and I've never been bitten by one, um, is excruciating and can last for a couple of days. Um, Antivenin is used, but sparingly, I, I, I suggest that... Uh, um, that most people don't have antivenin available to them and uh, medical profession professionals are not um, okay for, do, for um, administering it. So the, the, the spider, the, the venom from this particular group of spiders, the, the um, black widows or latrodectus, will have effects like stomach cramps, heart murmurs, difficulty breathing, sweats, all that sort of thing. It's a neurotoxic venom. That means it affects the nervous system uh, and it doesn't rot tissue uh, and things or, or anything like that. That's a cytotoxic venom. And uh, so, so discount any um, issues of that. Now, the, the two spiders at the bottom are a member of the steatoda. The one on the left is a, a one that we occasionally seen imported goods in the UK. It's uh, Steatoda peculiana. Uh, and the one on the right there is uh, the Steatoda nobilis, which uh, is the subject of our most of our talk today. Okay, this um, is a noble false widow. This one is a male. And you can tell that by the size of the abdomen, although the, in females, the abdomen does shrink after uh, after they've laid eggs, um, but it's got enlarged pedipalps at the front of the uh, the body. There, uh, these are the reproductive organs which are used for um, mating with females. And the males are considerably smaller than the female, um, and they're much more mobile. They're in the in the summer from July, say to October. These are the ones that quite often find their way into houses. Females, not so much. I wouldn't say they never find their way in, but they're, they're less likely to find their way in because they're in their webs and um, 
they're, they're just sedentary and capturing insects, whereas these have to go and have a look for females and, and the like. So you're more likely to counter the, encounter these in the house. Uh, I know from my perspective, um, I get quite a few of these in the house here at, uh, in Stevenage in the southeast of England. Uh, and uh, we have literally dozens of them on the back wall, a south facing back wall of, of um, the house. Okay, where did uh, Steatoda come from? Well, um, it came from the Canary Islands and the Madeira, and, and it arrived here in Torquay, actually, in around 1879 with, with fruit and produce from those islands. It's endemic to those islands, but it's a very good colonizer. Um, and in the next hundred years, this spider uh, has spread all along the south coast, or in the, the first hundred years, uh, all along the south coast and the west coast of southern England. Um, and that was the case until about 20, 30 years ago. Now, uh, there are some things you need to know about false widows because most of them look like this in the web. Uh, and most of the, thrid, all of the thridid spiders, and there are uh, quite a few in the UK, but only six members of the genus uh, uh, Steatoda. Um, and they have their webs tucked away in cracks and crevices with the web coming out into the open and they are in the web just like this, hanging upside down. So they don't, they're not on top of the web, they're hanging upside down. Uh, this incidentally isn't a thridid spider. So this is what I put this slide in here for. Uh, although it looks like a thridid spider, it can be determined that it isn't from the hairs on the legs there, uh, which are quite spiky and quite significant. This is another species of spider called Meta um, and is encountered in caves. Uh, this one doesn't look as though it's in a cave or a cellar, but uh, that's where you would normally find them. And they're quite a, a localised species. This is the female false widow. Um, they, they are very shiny in appearance. You can see from this one, as opposed to the male, it's got a very uh, distended abdomen uh, and it's probably full of eggs. Uh, and its typical shape of the legs is this uh, shape where they go quite constricted, then it, uh, it opens out and then constricted again and opens out. So that is one of the features of the spider, but it isn't uh, a diagnostic uh, um, trait. Uh, not all the specimens exhibit this coloration. This one's a particularly dark one. Some, as you saw earlier in the male, uh, are quite boldly patterned. It depends on whether they've got distended abdomens and whether they're open to light and there is much variation. So if someone says to you, it's a false widow because it's got a skull and crossbones on the back, which is what I've heard before, uh, that isn't a diagnostic way of telling these apart. Uh, this is a sort of typical place that you would um, see a, a steatoda. Uh, this is nobilis again. Uh, the other one, which we'll come to in a little while, is steatoda uh, glossa, uh, but it's found in more sort of uh, outdoor, uh, sorry, indoor locations. Steatoda nobilis, the noble false widow, uh, is tended to be find, found out of doors but in sheltered locations, particularly areas where there's uh, sunshine, south-facing buildings and, and stuff like that, but not exclusively so. The, the egg sacs, which you see just there, <coughs> will produce up to 150 spiderlings. Um, they use, when they hatch from the eggs, these tiny little spiders, they'll use air currents and wind to migrate away from the egg, and they do a thing called ballooning where they point their abdomens in the air, fire some silk out, and the currents take, take them. Spiders have been found, actually, generally speaking, 
up in the upper atmosphere um, where they they can go from one place to another many many miles in in diff, in, in distance. Uh, this is a, a manhole that was lifted with numerous egg sacs. Uh, these, we think, are Steatoda uh, glossa, um, which is a close relative of the, the false widow. And incidentally, Steatoda glossa has uh, also got a, um, a cosmopolitan distribution. It's found in Australia uh, as well. And out there, it's called the cupboard spider uh, and has been known to actually kill and predate the infamous redback, uh, that member of that spider that, that I showed you earlier, uh, in very closely related to the Black Widow. So it, it, it is um, a very widespread spider found all over the world. Uh, but here in the UK, we tend to find it indoors only. This is the one that you usually find for pest controllers. You go into open up your boxes inside a warehouse or a kitchen or somewhere, and you'll see tiny little spiders come out. Some of them are quite big. Some of them are, are much, much smaller. These are quite often the case that it's uh, this particular species. Um, it's a very generalist. It's feeding on uh, insects in those warehouses and places like that. And there are places I go to now on my contracts where I'm opening up bait boxes uh, and nearly every bait box has got its own little uh, false widow in. Uh, of course, not the, the noble false widow, which, as I said, is more of an outside species, which is strange when you consider it coming from um, places like Canary Islands and Madeira, where it's much, much warmer. Uh, so this is a very blurred photo, I, I hasten to add, sorry about that, uh, of a, a juvenile false widow. Um, markings are distinctive, quite distinctive on the back there. They seem to look like a, a, like a, a chevron map marking. And uh, that's, that's what you tend to see when you open up a bait box. They can be almost black in colour. So they, they, they're not always this colour. And as I said, this is a juvenile. And here's a, a, a bigger one. This is um, an immature, I would say, sub-adult uh, with those markings on the back there. Uh, you'll notice that on this piece here, it's, um, it's on the, the part of the abdomen, you'll see um, this marking here. Um, so that's a very dark individual of Steatoda grossa. Um, and, and, and you'll notice that although it may look black, the, the coloration is, is almost like a mahogany, very dark mahogany. Uh, and you'll see the tiny hairs on the legs, which is quite different from the meta spider I showed you earlier. They're called comb-footed spiders because they are able to build um, their webs with using their comb, comb feet for combing the silk out of the uh, tip of the abdomen there. The spinnerets are in the, the tip of the abdomen. They build a very, what would look like a very messy web in structure. Uh, most of their prey is, is caught f uh, on the ground, but in the case of, of um, uh, nobilis, where they're high up, they will catch flying insects, but they, they, there's, they take quite hard-bodied, uh, insects with a hard exoskeleton, beetles, wood lice, things like that. Okay, then, now um, this is a distribution map of uh, the false widow from back in 2014. At that time, the furthest we found, found them in England um, was, was the wash. I suspect, I've heard reports now, people finding these way up into Cumbria uh, and possibly beyond. Um, it's remarkable, actually, that a species of spider like this has, has colonised this country. If I were to go to uh, a house now in this area, I would almost certainly find a Steatoda nobilis, almost to the exclusion of other spiders which were previously here, native spiders, uh, things like uh, Amorobius uh, and, and the like. They, they seem to have literally colonised buildings 
they don't tend to be out in the fields and, and places like that, but they have colonized buildings and are so, um, how shall I say it, independent of, of uh, anything else that they can force their way in and force other spiders out. Whether they actually predate other spiders is debatable. Um, <clears throat> there are pictures of these, uh, Steatoda nobilis, which have actually fed on vertebrate prey. There is a, a picture on the internet somewhere of one feeding on a baby bat that's fell from a loft, and another case in Ireland where they are well uh, entrenched. There's uh, some work being done over there by a guy called J.P. Dunbar at Dublin University. You might want to look that up. Um, where <coughs> they have fed on a common lizard, um, a viviparous lizard. So they, they do have this very sticky, viscous web uh, and the ability with some degree of um, insurance in their venom, venom to actually subdue prey of up to those sorts of size. So a tiny little bat and uh, uh, a, a common lizard. Incidentally, the, 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 false, the true, true widows of Latrodectus, the, um, the uh, redback and others, have actually been seen to take mice in their webs. It's incidental. They don't go out their way to prey on these animals. And then in one case, they've been seen to, to capture uh, eastern brown snakes, um, Pseudonarja textilis in, in uh, East Australia. So um, very, very potent venom. And, uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to mix it with, with those particular spiders, and that's the Latrodectus. Right, um, this is a bite from um, a supposedly from a, a false widow. I've got no way of uh, saying whether it is or isn't. When I was bitten by them, and I've been bitten a couple of times actually, uh, I didn't have anything like this. It was a there was some pain, and um, then it, it subsided and it was gone. Other people I've spoke to who I know personally. Um, one lady was she was bitten in her bed uh, by one and actually found the spider and uh, actually caught it and it was a, a false widow a male false widow but she didn't have anything like this she had pain in her hand for a little while um, for probably a couple of hours and when she spoke to me later in the day it had all gone completely uh, so uh, you know you, you stories that you hear in the press of spider bites. Um, are quite often like almost hysteria. They say that they've been bitten by a spider. There's no spider at hand that they can identify. Uh, and I've heard of cases where people have gone to their GP with a bite and the, the doctor said it's a false widow and the, the lady has actually said, well, that wasn't because it was a horse fly that bit me. Um, <laughs> uh, so there seems to be this hysteria of and a misidentification of bites among GPs and clinicians because they hear of something that has gone on because of the newspapers, the tabloids. Um, they tend to think this is the what's what's of affecting people. In, in, in lots of cases, it isn't a spider bite at all. It could be a bite from a flea, a tick, a mosquito, or anything else. So uh the the other point to consider um is well, I'll come to in a moment, but th this was a bite that was allegedly from a false widow. And this isn't what you would expect from a false widow, but I'm told it can develop into this in very, very, very few cases. And that's what it looked like after a time. Remember, I did say that necrosis doesn't occur with false widows. Um, this it looks as though uh, there is has been some necrosis, and it may be due to uh, the uh, bacteria on the chalesa, the fangs, which have penetrated it and caused uh, an infection there. The same as that you, you would get with a wasp sting. Okay, well, <laughs> this photo appeared in, in a newspaper, I'm not sure which, um, somewhere in the UK. And it was said to be a, a bite from a false widow. Well, uh, it wasn't a bite from a false widow. Uh, it, that, this was the surgery that was undertaken. 
looks as though he was had his artery opened up because of uh, thrombosis or something. But if he was bitten by a spider in the UK and the the doctor went and or the the surgeon went and did this, well, um, I don't really want to go to that surgeon. It's it's a pretty uh, vivid situation where you've got um, bites which occur and then you get, get opened up like this. Uh, this is due to to something else, I'm pretty sure. But uh, this was the sort of thing that you'll see in the press, which is a, supposed to be a, a, a false widow bite. And there is a widow in a box. That's a, a Steatola glossa. You can see prey in that box. You can see uh, wood lice. You can see all the drop-ins that have, have occurred there. Um, this was in a box where I, I went to uh, have a look. Uh, I'd just taken over the, the contract and uh, they asked me to have a look around and the, the previous contract had left boxes there and open it up. We found these uh, false widows. The little white specks at the bottom there are spider droppings. Um, so that's the sort of uh, thing that you'll find in many, many places these days. So, the, the thing to remember here is that um, no one in the UK has ever been died of a spider bite. That is categoric. There's no one ever. Some people get bitten by um, other species of spider that come into the country. And even they, uh, with some of the dangerous species that have come in, like Phenutria, uh, wandering, Brazilian wandering spiders, black widows, and they do come in from time to time. Um, quite often, in fact, uh, people have been bitten by these species, but never anyone has ever uh, died of a, a spider bite over here. There are more people die of wasp and bee stings um, in in Europe than there are from spider bite. There is a, a false widow, sorry, a true widow species in Europe, the southern uh, European black widow, and uh, that is uh, quite w well um, widespread and found all over the Mediterranean, including North Africa. I've actually found them in, in uh, Rome on the uh, Spanish steps, would you believe, underneath uh, one of the lights there, so at ground level. So that, um, people were sitting around, and I, I bet if I said there's a black widow here, they would have all panicked. And this is part of the problem, of course. We have this inherent most of us have an inherent fear of fox spiders they 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 are the one of the the top uh, phobias of people in the world um and no one really knows why it may be something to do with our ancestors but i, I certainly haven't had the fear uh, not for my adult life anyway um so so that's what uh, you you would expect from people they they have a fear they're, they're hysterical about it. And then we get these tabloid stories which blow it up out of all proportion. Okay, uh, I'll back to uh, the, the presentation. That's quite quick I've gone through that this, this morning. Oh, that was great, Chris. I mean, it gives us um, some time for questions. If we got them, we've got a couple in there. Um, I was going to say to you, did you encourage the bite that you sustained or was no, it just an accident? <laughs> no, it was an accident. I picked up, I was warned about them. It was at um, a place where there were reptiles and I was looking after the reptiles there and they warned me. It was This was donkeys years ago. This was in London. Um, and they warned me about the false widows in the cork bark. I didn't even know what they were then. And I picked up these pieces of cork bark for the cages, put my hand inside and got, what's that? And then it was, it was pretty nothing. It, it didn't, yeah. it wasn't even the equivalent of a wasp sting. Uh, and that's what most people would, would, would mm. have uh, happened to them. It, it, then they're pretty insignificant. All this business about uh, treating houses uh, and buildings i see some schools closed down in east london a couple of years ago through treat because they've closed the school down because a black widow a false widow's in there and they've treated it well my god mm -hmm. you know it's, it's mm -hmm. a bit over the top and to apply um pesticide to the outside of a building where these spiders would be um would is not particularly environmentally friendly because there'd be things like uh, small birds, notably mm. wagtails, which are 
find buildings to to look for prey, uh, feeding on those dead and dying insects or, or uh, insects and spiders. And so consequently, that's not a good idea. The, the most important thing I would say for, for spiders, uh, any spider that is, is education. In very, very few cases could a pesticide be applied and that would need to be indoors. And really, I mean, essentially the, the species we have in this country don't really need treating. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, the, the, what I would recommend is people cleaning their homes Controlling other insect pests, silverfish, wood lice, perhaps, and not uh, insects, of course, cockroaches, flies, even, uh, and can, keeping those under control. And the best weapon in their arsenal is a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. There's someone made a comment in the QA bit just saying that they usually refer people to the British um, Arachnological Society. Yeah. yeah. Can't believe I said that in one go. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, that word. Yeah. Um, so that helps them with the idea. And like you say, mm. that hysteria is, can be a problem. We hear spiders in the UK and we're like, oh my gosh, because um, yeah. we're not used to them. And then with the bites, you know, like with wasp stings, we all react differently. You know, some will, you know, it'll hurt, but they'll just have a tiny little red dot, whereas others, you know, they, they swell up. So it can be different, can't it? Precisely. I mean, if you were to go to Australia, for instance, um, redback spiders, which are, are extremely venomous, one of the most venomous spiders we in the UK. I mean, Australia's got quite a few um, noxious things, venomous things, highly venomous. They are on houses. You find them all the time in their hundreds. Mm -hmm. um, out there, it is appropriate to treat them on the house but lots of people don't bother. Uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I was in Western Australia uh, in a, a remote place, extremely remote place, and I sat on a chair on a veranda uh, and I put my hands underneath the chair like you do and suddenly felt something, turned the chair up, and there's a, a red back under the chair. So mm -hmm. the, these things were common around yeah. the building I was on. Uh, but again, they're, they're quite often found around buildings, but not often away from human habitation. They're anthropogenic. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, different different places in the world, you deal mm. with them differently. Is it ever, no, no, absolutely. There's a question um, uh, about size difference between the uh, false widow and the black widow. Is there a size difference? Could you confuse the two? Yeah, you you couldn't really, well, I say I'm, te I'm speaking from uh, my own perspective. You couldn't confuse the two. The, the markings are very different uh, on them. The, the, usually on Latrodectus, on the underside, there's a triangle, two triangles, dot to dot, uh, sorry, point to point, on the underside of the abdomen. And sometimes in the case of some species of, of uh, Latrodectus, there's a red marking on the back, but not always. You couldn't confuse it with any other... Um, of the the theridid spiders the 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 thing i would say is that you get very dark steatodders and they will sometimes look in the dark because i had one guy call me out um he was an american he called me out he said i've got widows in the loft black widows i went up there and in the dark there was a uh, a steatodder uh, and it, it looked just like a black widow but i managed to catch it um, and took it out. It was mm. okay, um, but no, they they can't be confused. The true widows are somewhat bigger than um, the the grosser, but you do get some pretty big uh, grosser and uh, nobilis. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're they're pretty large in size. Yeah, I've never had the pleasure to see one. I, mean, I did work down in Kent for a long time, but I've moved up to Yorkshire 13 years ago, so I've never really had the pleasure of... Whenever I see a spider outside or in a web, I think, oh, is that one? No, that's not one. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, so, they're so common around here. Um, mm -hmm. The local pub, for instance, I go down there and I'm sitting outside in the beer garden and I can see hundreds of webs, literally hundreds. Oh, wow. They are that prolific. And and I suspect they, they may well be way up in Yorkshire and places like that. So mm. keep them mm. peeled on the south, yeah. particularly in that area. I would look on the south side of buildings where it's sheltered. There's exposure to moisture, which mm -hmm. they need. Got lots of um, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, 
in the sun, you know, that, those places. But uh, 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 for instance, they will get into between brickwork uh, and window frames and, and be in there, and their web will be on the outside. Oh, right? okay. they're, they're, easily, they're easily teased out with a – I use a, an electric toothbrush. It's got the right frequency for um, for bringing them out, and you put it on the web and start it up. And if you've got a big one in there, it'll come running out. Smaller ones answer it key. <laughs> I've got images of you with your electric toothbrush outside yeah. uh, trying to tease a spider. I, I get some funny looks, <laughs> I can tell you. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few questions, in different yeah. worded, but generally uh, around the, the treatment side of things. You know, I have a customer and they're concerned and, you know, maybe they send a photo and it's confirmed. Oh, yeah, there's some false widow spiders there. Mm. What, what Generally, whether it's inside, outside, what's your recommendation on how to approach that? I certainly wouldn't treat them outside with a pesticide. Uh, I have uh, undertaken a contract where I've removed them from the building and that was physically removed them. Um, uh, <laughs> and it's a thankless task because no sooner that you you know that you're going to pick as many up as you can. And I told the person this, or the the comp the organisation this. You can remove them. You can use a vacuum cleaner to suck them out of the places. And in next to no time, they'll recolonise the building because there's places you can treat low down. But this was a it was a hospital actually, mm -hmm. and they were they were clearly all up the side of the building. Um, in two days, I removed about a thousand from this place, oh, yeah. um, which isn't round here. I hasten to add. Mm. Um, so, on the outside of a building, no treatment other than physical removal, because mm -hmm. you've got this inherent issue with uh, poisoning, secondary poisoning of birds inside a building. Again, I would try and um, vacuum them up do as best you can clearing up other infestations in the property you might want to use a pesticide in some certain circumstances but the, the the overall thing is that people's fear of them they think and because of the press the press haven't done us any favors on this mm. they've they've really emphasized how dangerous these are and it isn't the case it just isn't the case at all yeah there's an interesting question um, with regards to for example, you know, grey squirrels are an invasive species, and if we capture them, we've got to dispatch them. I mean, mm. obviously, insects are a different realm of consideration. But mm. you know, with with spiders, for example, that are non-native, should we be saying actually we we want to dispatch? We don't want these here because they're non-native. Well, that that is a um, a piece of research that is going on at the moment. Whether these are a species which we need to control. And how we control them is a different thing, but is it, do we need to control them? My um, own personal opinion is that they have uh, wiped out on my house and close uh, neighbours nearby other species of spider, species of spider that were abundant, part of our native spider fauna, whereas now you've, I just go out the back and all I see is, is false widows, and mm -hmm. uh, the, they're just everywhere. Uh, I've got about 30 or 40 on the back wall of the house here, adult females. Um, and I could get them out, but I know it's going, they're going to be replaced pretty quickly. Uh, but I think at some time in the future, we're going to have to grasp the nettle, but they will be so entrenched here, it will be impossible to wipe them out. Uh, mm -hmm. Even with grey squirrels, it's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> but we all have issues with grey squirrels. But these... Uh, they're not native. They've spread with climate change. I think there, there's a certain degree of that. They've they've come on leaps and bounds in the last um, twenty years, and uh, are here to stay. I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of uh, more technical questions in there. But what time of year do the young vacate the sacks and go airborne on web threads? You know. Yeah, or... th that's usually in the in the spring and summer. Although. Uh, the autumn, they can come out. I've seen them hatching in the autumn, but it's usually in the uh, sort of late spring time that you'd see those. Um, and, well, they're, they're very, very abundant around <laughs> here. You just see hordes of them. I've, I've got, I, I think I've got a colony living in my house, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but my my son is, is putting stuff up at the windows and stuff to keep them out, but he, he's failed miserably. 
I suppose so I like think- a lot of invertebrates, you know, that that warmer climate when it starts to in, increase yeah. in temperature is generally when most uh, invertebrates in the UK are active, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. I yeah. mean, I, I've seen this particular species of spider, uh, the noble false widow, on the outside of buildings on sunny days in December, January, mm-hmm. uh, and they're capturing prey um, in those situations. So mm-hmm. it's remarkable that an animal that from, from warmer climates has, mm-hmm. has been able to, to cope with our, our warmer summer, our, winter, our weather over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's um, they've just become well acclimated to that. Yeah. I think you possibly mentioned, I'm not sure, but um, Iona here asks, uh, do false widows eat other spiders or, 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 or do they stay away from them or do they cohabitate? No, no, they, 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 from my experience and my own uh, opinion is that they eat our own species of spider. They are predators of those along with lots of other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, And as I said earlier, they've even been implicated and and photos of them, one eating a baby bat and another one eating a a common lizard in in Northern Ireland. So that they are, pretty uh, voracious and they have no trouble in taking our own spiders on. The other spot I used to get out the back here was the Tegenaria, the or Evertegena, um, which is the big house spider, um, mm. big leg span, you know, like this. <laughs> um, and we don't get those here anymore on, on the house. They're down in the shed, but they're not in the house. Oh, okay, interesting. So, so they, they've, they've really knocked the other spider species. Hmm. Are there any um, sort of special traps for you know false widow spiders out there? No, no. Uh, the, the only traps there are are insect traps. And in this book here, which I hasten to add, the brown recluse spider hmm. um, is is about another spider that's found in North America, not over here. I hasten to add, which is implicated with all sorts of things, um, particularly necrotic. Uh, uh, bites where they go infected and the, the tissue actually rots. Mm-hmm. Um, out there, they use sticky traps a lot as monitoring devices. Uh, I'm not so sure it would be any good over here, except for picking up the males, which are sedentary and wandering around. The females are in their webs, so it's not going to pick those up, but you'll mm-hmm. pick up males in that, in that on those traps. Uh, and again, if if anyone wants to buy this book, it's available um, in if on a, online and it's pretty cheap, and it gives a good bit in the back there on controlling the um, brown recluse in houses, and you could take some of that on board for for the um, other species, the other species of spider. Yeah, great, good stuff, good stuff. Um, well, we've gone over time a bit, so I'm going to leave the questions there. We've only got. Two more from Matt and Paul. They're general um, questions for you. Would you be okay to go in there and, and type some answers to those? Can you see your Q and A button, uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, great. If you click on that, then you'll be able to see next to the names you've got um, type answer, and you can you can type those in there. If that would be okay. Yeah, okay, we'll do. Oh, fantastic, Chris. That was so amazing. There's lots of comments everywhere about how great your talk was, and really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. All the best. Cheers now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.